The massive tax cuts for the wealthy never played well with the American people. Even before they were passed, polling indicated that more Americans actually opposed these tax cuts than wanted them, accepted them, approved of them. And so now we have certain members of the GOP running for election, re-election, who just don't want to talk about the tax cuts because it's not playing so well with their constituents. And a prime example of that is Representative Peter Roskim from Illinois. Now he is the architect of the tax cuts that were recently passed by Republicans, which of course went into effect this year. But he is not mentioning it at all in any of his ads. Roskam has yet to air a single ad touting the law he helped craft. His challenger though, businessman Sean Kasten, is now on the air slamming him for the legislation. And we have an example of that, so let's take a look at the video. I'm Sean Kasten and I approve this message. There's no disputing Peter Roskam's link to Donald Trump as the author of Trump's tax plan that gave $1 trillion in tax breaks to big corporations and the top 1%, adding nearly $2 trillion to the deficit. And to pay for all this, they want to send the bill to America's seniors, cutting Social Security and Medicare. Tax breaks for corporate special interest. Illinois families get stuck with a bill. Roskam and Trump together 94% of the time, hurting Illinois families. That ad is 100% accurate. It is, it is. And the district that, that, that they're having this race in is a fascinating district. We'll get to the details of that in just a second. But what was Roskam's response to these attack ads? I love it. My opponent has really embraced the politics of ridicule. He's fallen into this trap of Republican name calling. Oh, I love that, he's, oh. he's toast. So he. Roskam, the Republican, is doing what weak sauce Democrats normally do. Oh, I'm not with them. I'm not with them. He's calling it Republican name calling, even though he's a Republican, mm -hmm. right? And oh, and he's complaining about being bullied. This is a classic way that Democrats lose. Mm -hmm. So, Roskam, thank you very much. We appreciate your weakness. And what you're doing is reinforcing Kasten's framing, which is the number one mistake that Democrats normally make, and he's making it. Wonderful. Uh, my favorite part yeah. uh, is when he called Kasten too aggressive. Oh, is he too aggressive in calling out uh, what you're actually doing? That, exactly, exactly. You are the architect of this uh, tax plan, and it's been a disaster for the very people that you're supposed to be representing. So that's the interesting thing. So this district is predominantly white and also upper middle class. Most people make at least six figures. Um, and it used to be dominated by Republicans. Just to give you an example, Mitt Romney won this district by an eight point margin in 2012, but Trump lost it by seven in 2016. And part of the reason why they lost it, he lost it, Trump did, is because the People in the area are actually socially liberal, but they're also fiscally conservative. They're legitimately fiscally conservative. So they don't like these tax cuts. And let's keep it real, Illinois does have a higher state tax. Mm -hmm. And the people living in this district are worried that this is actually going to increase their taxes because the new tax plan caps the amount that you can deduct in state taxes. No, no, Roscoe's toast. I mean, if- Gone. Normally, this is the kind of thing that the Democrats would bungle and it would drive me crazy because it's a layup. I mean, if Hillary won it by seven points, there's no reason why a Democrat should lose it in 2018. But even more so, the phenomenon that Anna just talked about, well, they're normally fiscally conservative. They might like the tax cuts and they might think, oh, I'd rather have the money and I don't care if the Republicans are terrible people to other human beings, mm -hmm. right? It'll outweigh, but not anymore for two reasons. One is this particular tax cut actually raises taxes in Illinois, New York, New Jersey, and California. So they wanted to punish the blue states, oops, mm -hmm. okay? So those fiscally conservative guys goes, wait, wait, I just got robbed? My taxes went up and you hate gays and blacks and all these things that I don't agree with, right? And so that's the second phenomenon. They're highly educated in that district vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the country. So it makes them very uncomfortable it like before when it was dog whistles, if you give them enough tax cuts, they could get past the dog whistles. Mm -hmm. Now when it's a bullhorn saying we hate Muslims and Latinos and we got massive issues with blacks and, and, and gays, etc. They go, man, I, it's churning my stomach, I can't vote for these monsters. 
and you raise my taxes, I'll see you, wouldn't want to be you. And that's why now Roskam is crying and crying about how Kasten is too aggressive. Like what you see, click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.